King Jaehaerys Targaryen returned to King's Landing alone on the wings of his dragon, Vermithor. Five knights of his King's Guard arrived three days earlier to assess the readiness and the preparations for the King's arrival. Queen Alysanne did not accompany Jaehaerys, given the uncertainty that surrounded their marriage and the fraught nature of the King's relationship with their mother, Queen Alyssa. She remained on Dragonstone with the rest of the King's Guard. The skies were grey and a persistent drizzle had fallen half the morning as the council awaited the King's coming in the inner yard of the Red Keep. When, at last, the sounds of wings were heard and the guardsmen on the eastern walls of the Red Keep caught sight of Vermithor's bronze scouts, there came a cheer that grew louder and louder, rolling past the walls of the Red Keep into the city below. Jaehaerys did not land at once, sweeping over the city three times, each time lower than before, giving everyone in King's Landing a chance to marvel at Vermithor. Only then did he bring the dragon down in the yard before Maegor's Holdfast, where his lords were waiting for him. The king had changed a lot since he was last in the Red Keep. The child who had run away to Dragonstone had returned a man. He was taller by several inches and his chest and arms had filled out. His hair was flowing loose about his shoulders and a fine gold beard covered his cheeks and chin. He wore a salt-stained leather garb fit for riding, but on his sword belt he carried Blackfire, his grandfather's sword, the Sword of Kings. The lords gathered felt an uncertain fear of what was about to happen. As he slid gracefully from Vermithor's back, he smiled and the tension dissipated quickly. Jaehaerys pulled off his gloves and tucked them into his belt, then told his lords that they all have work to do. One person not there to greet the king was his mother, Queen Alyssa, who was still secluded in Maegor's Hogfast. What was said between mother and son when they met for the first time since the confrontation on Dragonstone is not known. When the two appeared from the Hogfast, Alyssa holding the king's arm, her face red from tears, the Dowager Queen, a regent no more, was present for the welcoming feast that evening and at numerous other functions in the days after, but no longer did she have a seat on the small council. The young king began his reign by remaking the council, keeping some of the men and replacing others. He confirmed his mother's appointment of Lord Damon Valerian as Hand of the King and retained Lord Corbray as commander of the city watch. Lord Tully was thanked and sent home to Riverrun to replace him as Master of Law. Jaehaerys named Elbin Massey, who had been amongst the first to seek him out on Dragonstone. For Lord Admiral and Master of Ships, Jaehaerys turned to Manfred Redwine, Lord of the Arbor. It marked the first time the Admiralty had gone to anyone not of House Valarium. Jaehaerys had also dismissed Edgar Kaltegar, Master of Coin, and with him, his taxes, every one of them, struck down by royal decree three days into the young king's rule as the city rejoiced. Finding a suitable replacement as Master of Coin proved hard. Many urged Jaehaerys to appoint Lyman Lannister, the wretched lord in Westeros, but Jaehaerys was disinclined, stating that although the Lannisters were very rich, it didn't necessarily mean they knew how to make money. In the end, Jaehaerys made a far bolder choice, reaching across the narrow sea. No lord, no knight, not even a magister, Rigo Draz. Rigo Draz was a merchant, a trader and money changer, who had risen from nothing to become the richest man in Pentos, only to find himself shunned by his fellow Pentoshi. Draz gladly answered the king's call, moving his family to Westeros. The young king named him a lord. As he was a lord without land, sworn men or a castle, some dubbed him the Lord of Air. Jaehaerys also sent off Septim Matthias, who had deposed his marriage on Dragonstone so loudly. He was replaced by Septim Bath, a much more humble man who was spotted entering the city upon donkey back. Only when all this had been done, to his satisfaction and his new memory in place, did Jaehaerys instruct to dispatch a raven to Storm's End, summoning Lord Rhaegar Brathian back to the city. The arrival of the king's letter sent Rhaegar and his brothers at odds. So Boris told his brother that the boy would have his head if he did not do as he bids, and encouraged him to go to the wall and join the Night's Watch. Garen and Ronald, the younger brothers, urged defiance instead, stating that Storm's End was as strong as any castle in the realm, that if Jaehaerys meant to have his head, let him come and take it. But Lord Rhaegar only laughed and reminded his brothers how strong Harrenhal once was. Lord Rhaegar decided he'd rather explain his actions to the king than take the black if need be. The king received him seated on the Iron Throne with his crown upon his head. The lords of his council were present and Sir Joffrey Dogger and Sir Lawrence Roxton of the King's Guard stood at the base of the throne. Lord Rhaegar's footsteps echoed as he made the long walk from the doors to the throne. The Lord of Storm's and fell to one knee, bowed his head and laid his sword at the base of the throne. He told the king to do as he will, and he'd only ask that his brothers be spared and house Brathian. They did what he did for the good of the realm as he saw it. Jaehaerys raised his hand to silence Lord Rogar before he could say further. He told his former hand, I know what you did and what you said and what you planned to do. I believe you when you say you meant no harm to my person or to my queen, and you are not wrong. I would make a splendid maester, but I hope to make an even better king. Some men say that we are now enemies. I would sooner think of us as friends who disagreed for a time. When my mother came to you seeking refuge, you took us in at great risk to yourself. You could have easily made gifts of us to Magor. Instead, you swore me your sword and called your banners. I've never forgotten that. Words are wind, your lordship, my dear friend. You spoke of treason, but committed none. You wished to undo my marriage, but you could not do so. Treasonous actions deserve punishment. Foolish words are another matter. He rose and told Rogar if he truly desired to go to the wall, 
he would not stop him as the Night's Watch needed strong men like Rogar Baratheon. But he made clear to Rogar that it would sooner he remain here in his service. He would not sit upon the Iron Throne if not for him. And he still has need for him. The realm still has need for men like him. When King Aenys took the crown, he was beset on all sides by rebel lords. And Jaehaerys feared the same may before him. Test his resolve, his will and his strength. He told Rhaegar, My mother believes that godly men throughout the realm will rise up against me when my marriage is made known. Though perhaps so. To meet these tests, I need good men around me. Warriors willing to fight for me, to die for me, and for my queen. Lord Rhaegar was baffled by the king's words. Looking up at the boy, he said with his voice thick with emotion. He agreed. The king did make it clear that there are clauses for this pardon. That Rhaegar should never speak out against Alisanne or the king again. That she should show his mother, Queen Alyssa, no more disrespect. That she would return to him to Storm's End. The king and Rhaegar agreed, but there was one final matter to deal with. Rhaegar asked the king if he wanted hostages to secure his loyalty. Suggesting one of his brother's three young children. The king did not respond. He descended the iron throne, asking Rhaegar to follow him. He led him to the inner wards of the Red Keep, where his dragon Vermifort was being fed. When the king approached with Rhaegar, the dragon raised his head, glaring at them. The dragon grew larger each day, he told Rhaegar, while striking just under the dragon's chin. Jaehaerys looked at Rhaegar and said, Keep your hostages, my lords, as why would I need them? The boy king's intent was clear. Every man, woman and child in the Stormlands were his hostages when the king had a dragon. Thus was the peace made between the young king and his former hand, and sealed that night by a feast in the Great Hall, where Lord Rhaegar sat beside Queen Alyssa, man and wife once more, and raised a toast to the health of Queen Alysanne, pledging his love and loyalty before all the assembled lords and ladies. Four days later, when Lord Rhaegar departed to return to Storm's End, Queen Alyssa went with him, escorted by Sir Pate the Woodcock and a hundred men at arms to see to the safety through the Kingswood.